for our fourth quantum number that represents the spin of the electron. Uh, one thing about the spin, which is interesting compared to the other three quantum numbers, is that the spin number doesn't depend on anything. It only has the possible values of plus one-half or negative one-half. And these correspond to what we call spin up versus spin down. And so we represent spin up with a half up arrow. And then spin down would be kind of the matching down half arrow. You can also think of this as <clears throat> counter spin counterclockwise versus spin clockwise, uh, kind of that, that kind of concept to it. Okay. And that's it for spin. Independent of the n, l, and m sub l values, m sub s can either be plus one half or minus one half. So putting all four of our quantum numbers together, now we can discuss uh, what our psi, okay, or what our wave function means. Okay. Each psi, each wave function, describes an electron, and that description has to be unique. We cannot have two identical electrons. They have to all be different. And how we do that, how we represent each of these psi's, is for however many electrons we have, each psi then is going to have a unique set of n, l, m sub l, and m sub s values. <clears throat> so let's look at what this means in an example here. Let's look at how many electrons can exist in the n equals 1 level, and then we'll look at the n equals 2 level. And we'll see once we make that jump, once we go from n equals 1 to n equals 2, our lives get a little bit more complicated very, very quickly. So in the n equals 1 level, if n is equal to 1, then L, which can equal n minus 1, only has the option of being 0. If L is equal to 0, M sub L only has the option of being 0. And then we have two options for M sub S. We can either be a plus 1 half, or M sub S can be minus 1 half. Okay, so here's one electron described by n equals 1, l equals 0, m sub l equals 0, m sub s equals plus 1 half. Our second electron has the same quantum numbers except for the m sub s one. When n equals 1, l can only equal 0, so we've exhausted our zeros, or we've exhausted our l's, we've exhausted our m sub l's because that depends on l. And we've exhausted our two options for m sub s. So what this corresponds to is that in the n equals 1 level, we can only have two electrons. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the n equals 2 level. So if we move up a level, so if we have n equals 2, l can equal 0, l can also equal 1, because l can equal n minus 1. So we have 0 and 1. If l equals 0, m sub l can only equal 0. But when l is equal to 1, m sub l can be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. And then for both of these situations, m sub s, as always, can either be plus or minus 1 half. So this is kind of an overview of our possibilities, but doesn't really describe how many electrons we can have. So what we want to do is kind of work ourselves out a table. So I'm going to give us, we have N, we have L, M sub L, 
and M sub S. <clears throat> and we'll work out how many we can have. So when n equals 2, we have L. We'll start with L equals 0, and we'll exhaust that value. So when L equals 0, M sub L can only equal 0. And then we have two M sub S values. We have plus 1 half, and we have minus 1 half. Okay, so M sub L is still 0, L is still 0, and n equals 2. So we've exhausted our values with n equals or l equals 0. Now we can exhaust our values with l equals 1. So we still have n equals 2. Now we're working with uh, l of 1. When l is 1, m sub l has three options. And each of these three options will have two m sub s options. So when m sub l is negative 1, m sub s can be plus one half and minus one half when m sub l is also negative one, l equals one, and n is still equal to two. So that exhausts our m sub l equaling one and l equaling one. Now we'll have two m sub s values when m sub l equals zero. So n is equal to two. We're still working with L equal 1. Now we want to work with M sub L equals 0. And we have two M sub S values of plus 1 half and minus 1 half with that same set of N, L, and M sub L. Now we have N equals 2, L still equal 1. We have our final option for m sub l of being plus 1. And we have two m sub s values possible, plus 1 half and minus 1 half. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've now exhausted all of our possibilities. So each one of these rows represents an electron. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in the n equals two level, we have eight electrons. Now looking further at this, we have kind of our separation here. We have two electrons existing when L equals zero. <clears throat> so we have two electrons when L equals zero, which means that we have two electrons possible living in the S orbital. In the P orbital, we have two, four, six, six electrons living in the L equals one, which means we have six electrons in the P orbitals. <clears throat> this is actually the mac maximum number of electrons that can be in an s orbital. An s orbital can only have two electrons. A p orbital can have six electrons, okay? Because each orbital, <clears throat> excuse me, each orientation of the orbital can have two electrons. So there are three orientations of the p orbital: p x, p y, and p z. Okay, each of those can have two electrons. So we have a total of six electrons. In the d orbital, we have five orientations. <clears throat> which means two electrons per orientation, which means it can hold ten electrons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Definitely worth practicing problems, uh, writing out these so that you can remember your rules of what 
quantum number exists when.